The Lindbergh furnace consists of four tube furnaces, which are used for curing polymers, sintering, and growing oxides and nitrides in silicon wafers. Let's get familiar with the various parts of the machine. There are four main parts of the Lindbergh furnace. The gas flow timers, the flow meters, the three-way valve, the temperature controls. Let's also introduce our lab users. <laughs> There are four gas flow timers on the Lindbergh furnace. The orientation of the timers match the orientation of the tubes that they correspond with. With a maximum time of 12 hours, the flow timers are used to control the time that the gas flows in the furnaces. The minimum amount of time for a process to function correctly is two hours. When the timer reaches zero, the gas will discontinue to flow. There are three flow meters located just below the gas flow timers. Beneath each of the flow meters are two flow meter valves. The cutoff valves are the valves closest to the flow meters. The handles at a 90 degree angle from the flow meters are closed. When the handles are parallel with the flow meters, they are open. The lower valves are the needle valves, which control the gas flow into the flow meters. To open the needle valves, turn the round handles counterclockwise. The leftmost flow meter controls tube 4, which uses nitrogen gas. The middle flow meter controls tube 2. The flow meter to the right controls tube 1, which uses forming gas. Tube 3 is controlled by the mass flow controller next to the Lindbergh furnace. Just to the right of the flow meters is a three-way valve. This valve controls which gas flows into tube 2. The two selectable gases are oxygen and nitrogen. The narrow end of the handle should point to the gases chosen to be used. When tube 2 is not in use, the valve should be turned off. When you use furnace tube 2, which performs oxidation, remember that you must make sure that the oxygen cylinder in the chase behind the Lindbergh furnace is on. In order to check if the gas pressure is sufficient, you must read the cylinder gauge closest to the cylinder. The gauge just to the left of that one indicates the gas line pressure. It should be set at approximately 25 psi. When your process is finished, the oxygen cylinder should be turned off by turning the valve clockwise. The furnace temperature is controlled by a programmable temperature control unit. There is one control unit for every furnace. There are three programmable temperature controllers on each of the temperature control units. These controllers control each of the furnace zone heaters and allow the programming of several process steps. To operate the furnaces, you must be able to perform the following steps. Set the appropriate atmosphere, load the furnace, set the temperature program, run the process, end the run. When you log into the Lindbergh furnace, select the furnace tube you're going to use for your process. The first step in setting the atmosphere is to set the gas flow timer to the length of your run. This will prevent the waste of gas in the system when the tube sits idle at the end of the run. The next step is to set the flow of gas using the flow meters. Make sure the cutoff valve is open, then use the needle valve to set the desired amount of gas flow. valve should never be turned all the way open or closed. Over tightening of the valve could damage it. If you want to turn off the gas flow temporarily, turn off the cutoff valve. The first step in loading the furnace is to place your samples into a quartz boat which can be found in the nitrogen box next to the Lindbergh furnace.
The next step is to remove the cap from the end of the tube and place the boat just inside the opening. When that step is completed, use the metal rod to carefully push the boat to the middle of the furnace tube. You will know that it has reached the middle when the marking on the metal rod is aligned with the edge of the metal cover at the mouth of the tube. touch the inside of the furnace tube. The metal can cause damage to the quartz. The first thing you need to do when you set the temperature is open the black covers below the white arrow keys on the programmable controllers on the front panel of the control unit. The run, hold, REM, and P keys should be displayed. Please note that if the red light in the lower left hand corner of the excess temperature gauge appears, then the system has suffered an over temperature alarm. The system will not ramp up until this light is off. In order to do this, you simply need to reset the alarm by pressing the yellow button just beneath the red light. To initiate the programming procedure, press the P key and hold until PR1 is displayed on the program display. With PR1 displayed, Press the white arrow keys to set the first desired ramp rate in degrees Celsius per minute. Now press the P key again to display PL1.